The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as Joe. Together in the gay new exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. Yes, it's the Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray show, starring, well, naturally, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, as Susan Armstrong and George Harvey, respectively. And as we join them in the offices of the Morning Star, we find Fred, uh, George, I mean, talking with Sammy, the office boy. Sammy? Yes, Mr. Harvey? Do you hear something outside which sounds like it might be a parade? Mr. Harvey, I do. That's funny. There can't be a parade today. I, I didn't know about it. No circus in town. It's not a holiday, no conventions. It can't be a parade. You always know best, Mr. Harvey. Thank you, Sammy. But you better tell the band about it, because 15 guys are blowing their brains out over nothing. Well, let me take a look, Sammy. Huh. I guess it is a parade, and they're stopping right outside the office. Well, they don't play good, but they sure play loud. Where's Miss Armstrong, Sammy? Do you, do you think she knows anything about this? She's in our office, Mr. Harvey. If you're speaking today, why don't you ask her? Miss Armstrong and I are always on the best of terms, Sammy. Always. Ah. And I shall ask her. Susan, do you know anything about those 15 lease breakers down in the street? You mean the parade? Why, no, George. I have no idea what the occasion is. Susan? Yes, George? Susan, I happen to know a political hack named McDonough has been looking for a candidate his party can back for mayor. Really? They haven't approached you, have they? Well, have they? I would certainly not consider under any circumstances running for public office, George. Well, that's a relief. Except, of course, an answer to a genuine and spontaneous draft by my fellow citizens, which I could not in all conscience refuse. No, Susan, you can't do this. You running for mayor? Well, the, the whole idea is ridiculous. Miss Armstrong, oh. it is a draft, my dear lady. I couldn't hold them back. A groundswell that I haven't seen in all my years in politics. Listen to them out there. George, isn't it exciting? A draft. A genuine and undeniable draft. Well, there's enough wind here for it. We must face it, Harvey. Your editor here has captured the imagination of the voting public of this town. A tide of public opinion is gathering. The incumbent has grown complacent and corrupt in public office. The coming storm of an aroused people will sweep him and his gang of jackals out of the city's highest office. Replacing him with Miss Susan Armstrong. McDonald, this incumbent you're asking our editor to sweep out, Tyler Hendricks, you realize his store buys about 20% of our total advertising every year? I do. That is why I cannot urge you to accept the honor we offer, Miss Armstrong. I can only say our fair city needs women like you. Susan. Uh, Mr. McDonald, uh, may I speak to them, the public? Certainly. If you'll just step over to the window. You're going to refuse, of course, Susan. The people have spoken, George. It is they who deserve the answer. The people? A few of McDonald's relatives and the tone-deaf 15? If you will excuse us, Harvey. My fellow citizens of Hillsdale. What a real tough audience. Your emissary, John McDonough, has conveyed your very kind offer to support me for public office. I am truly and humbly grateful... I am flattered, but I cannot head the ticket of your party in the coming election. Well, you had me worried for a minute, Susan. No one person can head the ticket. Indeed, no. But if each and every one of you will march along with me in a sincerely democratic movement, we will restore to our city the type of government it needs and deserves. <laughs> Miss Armstrong, may I be the first to shake the hand of our new mayor? Why, thank you. George? Better get on the bandwagon, Harvey. You might end up as the mayor's new secretary. <laughs> I'd rather die. Extra, extra, read all about it. Miss Susan Armstrong, Reform Party candidate for mayor. Bringing her big guns to bear on the Hendricks administration, Miss Susan Armstrong told an overflow audience at Helps Hall tonight that what this city needs is a woman who will clean house. Extra, extra, Tyler Hendricks cancels advertising in Hillsdale Morning Star as a result of campaign. <laughs> <laughs> 
the campaign look to you, Mr. Harvey? Terrible. I think she might win. Well, don't worry, Mr. Harvey. I don't think Miss Armstrong being elected will change things between you at all. Thanks. She might even marry you. Then you won't have to argue so much. Well, that's a thought. And think of the satisfaction, Mr. Harvey, of well, being a silent contributor to the welfare of our city. Sammy... Well, the world sees only the efficient, tireless mayor. You and I will know, Mr. Harvey, that well, there is one who is always ready with a quick smile and a cheery word when things aren't going right at City Hall... One who keeps himself in the background ever. But she and she alone knows... Sammy, uh, haven't you some place to go, like the home for delinquents? I was just trying to look on the bright side of things, Mr. Harvey. Well, thanks very much. It was nothing. George Harvey, first lady of our city. I think I'll join the Foreign Legion. Take my things, Patience. Mm -hmm. I've got a million and one things to do. Phone calls, speeches to write, publicity to read over, and... Oh, yes, George is dropping by later. Uh, for dinner, Miss Armstrong? No, no, later. I don't have the time. And you can just give me a quick bite on the run. You run by and I'll bite you. What? Uh, just a small, non-political joke. Uh, how is George? He must be getting thin since the campaign started. George? Oh, he's about the same, I guess, Patience. Have I been neglecting George? Yes, I, I guess I have. Well, I'll be more than usually nice to him tonight. I'll see to it that we have the whole evening to ourselves. The entire evening. That is, after he writes one or two speeches for me. <laughs> That's a romantic setting. An ink-stained Romeo. Oh, dear, I totally forgot. Mr. McDonough's dropping in later, too. You think George will mind? Well, no, no, not at all. It's just like having a blind date with Siamese twins. That's all. Patience... I almost hope I don't get elected. If you're trying to lose George's vote, I think you've made it. Good evening, Patience. Is the Lord High Mayor of Hillsdale in residence? She's receiving delegates of the common people in the living room, Mr. Harvey. What's happened to this house, Patience? It's different. It doesn't even smell the same anymore. It's the lack of cooking. My duties are confined chiefly to opening sardine yeah. cans. It's a tough election. Mr. Harvey, Miss Armstrong. Thank you, Patience. George, how nice of you to come. Nobody fights City Hall. Sit down, George. Sit down there. Oh, it's been so long since we've really talked. Hasn't it? <laughs> Wonderful weather. Yeah, yeah. Terrific. If you like weather. <laughs> Seen any shows lately? Uh, no. Well. Well. Well, I know you're busy, Mrs. May, and I won't impose on your... Oh, uh, George, uh, sit down. No, don't sit over there again. Sit here by me. Well, just for a minute. A minute? George, don't you realize I planned this whole evening just so the two of us could have it together? You did. But what about the speeches you wanted me to write? Oh. Oh, forget about the speeches. Why should we spend the whole evening writing speeches? Susan, you're so right. <laughs> That's much better. You don't know what a pleasure it is to be able to talk to you without elbowing aside two dozen ward healers. Really? And honest John McDonough. Well, when I think of the gall of McDonough's so-called reform party asking you to save their chestnuts George. Hmm? Oh. You're right, Susan. I won't say another word. You sure you got enough room on this sofa? Plenty. Am I crowding you? <laughs> crowding me. Mm. 
Oh, this is nice, isn't it? You know, Susan, you're too beautiful to be a mayor. Oh, George. That's true. Nobody's going to be able to keep their minds on their work. I can hardly keep my mind on what I'm saying right now. You don't have to say anything, George. <laughs> That's what I was working up to. George. Susan. Well, well, I hope I'm not interrupting anything, folks. No, no, McDonald. You're just what the party needs. Uh, patience let me in. I hope I'm not late, Miss Armstrong. Late? Susan, I thought you said... Well, that... uh, do we have much business to go over, Mr. McDonough? Uh, not much. But you can't blame me for dragging it out as long as possible, Miss Susan. <laughs> Melonhead. Huh? Uh, George just said, uh, go right ahead, Mr. McDonough. Oh, uh, just a few minor matters of business we have to get your okay on, Miss Susan. Uh, yes, here we are. So minor, I'd almost forgotten what they were. Uh -huh. uh, ready? Sure. I left my wallet at home. Uh, George... Yes, uh, go ahead, Mr. McDonough. Now, for Sheriff, the Reform Party candidate's been forced to drop out because of ill health. But at this late date, we were very fortunate in getting a Jim Dandy replacement and veteran police officer, Honest Phil Waltman. Honest Phil Waltman? Him? Well, they had to promote him from pounding a beat because he was stealing the sidewalk. Please, George. I'm sure that the leaders of the Reform Party would not suggest anyone they're not absolutely sure of. Well, they're sure of him, all right. I thank you for your confidence, dear lady. Uh, just one more minor matter. Our candidate for city treasurer has also been forced to drop out. Ill health. Sounds like an epidemic. But in his place, we have, after a great deal of persuasion, secured a really outstanding man in the field of clean government. Honest Jack Stewart. No. For city treasurer? Well, that's like leaving a hungry Great Dane alone in a butcher shop. George, do you have anything concrete against either one of these men? Well, concrete? No. They're both very intelligent men. They've never been caught. Oh, Miss Armstrong, George. I can assure you that the screening board of the Reform Party has gone through the past life of each of these men with a fine-tooth comb. Of course, if you would prefer to listen to unfounded rules. Susan, I positively forbid you to run on the same slate with either of these crooks. Oh, you do? Yes, I do. Mr. McDonough, you can tell the party leaders that I have the utmost faith in their judgment. Someday I'm going to learn to keep my big mouth shut. Now, back to our two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. As we join them, we find that the situation is, well, shall we say, a bit tense. Good morning, Mr. Harvey. Pleasant evening at the home of our future mayor. Certainly, Sammy. A thoroughly pleasant disaster. Miss Armstrong come in yet? Not yet. Well, let me know when she... Oh, here she is. Susan... Good morning, Sammy. Hi, Miss Armstrong. Morning, George. Susan, I've been thinking the last night over. I've decided that I was wrong. Well, I, I might have been in the wrong myself, George, but we can talk it out. And... No, I was wrong. First, I decided that if you were bullheaded enough to accept those two crooks on your ticket, I'd let you do it. But then I saw that I have a duty to this city which overrides mere personalities. Indeed. And you being a reasonable person, Susan, I was sure that after you'd slept on it, you'd come around to my way of thinking. Well, Sammy... Will you inform Mr. Harvey that his opinions on the political scene are of interest to no one but himself? Sure. Mr. Harvey, Miss Armstrong says that you're... Sammy, will you point out to Miss Armstrong that running for political office is just a little more complicated than buying a new hat? And that it takes someone of experience to see what these crooks on her side are up to? Be glad to. Miss Sammy, Armstrong... Sammy, will you make it clear to Mr. Harvey that it's after 9 o'clock and that his duties on this paper would start every morning promptly at that hour do not include the position of political editor? I shall be in my office. Mr. Harvey, Miss Armstrong says... That I you... heard her, I heard her, Sammy. And Sammy, I am going to rescue Miss Armstrong from the consequences of her folly, whether she wants to be rescued or not. Tell that to Miss Armstrong. You know, I feel just like a carrier pigeon. Mr. Harvey... <laughs> Quiet, Sammy. Mr. Harvey, I just thought, couldn't we be put in jail for this? We are serving our country, Sammy. 
We have to get some information on McDonough and those two other crooks. The place to look for it is the Reform Party headquarters. You convinced me. But can you convince a judge? Quiet. Here we are. Hand me that skeleton key, Sammy. Now you wait outside here, Sammy. If anybody comes, whistle. If anybody comes, whistle. Good luck, Mr. Harvey. Thanks. I see a lighter switch here someplace. Yeah, got it. And let's see. File cabinet over here. Wonder what I should look under. G for graft. Yeah, nothing here. Nothing here. Nothing here. Looking for something? Huh? Oh. <laughs> no, no, I was just browsing. <laughs> Sammy. Isn't it a late hour for browsers? Well, uh, insomnia. <laughs> I'm Mr. McDonald's secretary. Oh? Who are you? A spy? Why, no, 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 not that at all. As a, as a matter of fact, I'm a... Uh, uh, send for the police. I'm a spy. And I'm Gloria. Oh, glad to know you, Gloria. I'm George. George. Yes? I suppose you're going to compel me to give you the information you want. Huh? Force it out of me. Force it out of you? I'm helpless. You're strong, virile, fiercely determined. Well, and we're alone together. We are? You gorgeous, magnificent brute, you. <laughs> it's nothing, really. I can't withstand you another minute. All the confidential records are in the top left drawer of Mr. McDonald's desk. There. I've told. But I couldn't help myself. Say, they are here. Gloria, won't you get in trouble about this? Trouble? McDonald fired me today. I just came down tonight to clean out my desk and steal carbon paper. Oh. But you were very masterful, George. I was? Say, you... Uh... So didn't the kid outside whistle when you came in here? He sure did. Where do kids that age learn to whistle like that? Hello? Susan, this is George. Susan, I've got the... George, what time is it? It's a little after midnight. Well, I'm sorry, George, but I don't want to come to any party... You tell me about it tomorrow. Susan, wait. Yes? I've just dug up the confidential records on McDonough and all the rest of his gang. You've got to withdraw as their candidate, Susan. You've got to go over to McDonough's house tonight. Are you serious, George? Wait till you see the stuff I've got on them. Really? Really. I'll meet you outside of McDonough's place in half an hour. All right, George. You won't say I told you so. I just couldn't stand it if you did. Only once. I told you so. I'll see you in a half hour. <laughs> Well, these are very serious charges, young lady. Very serious charges so close to an election. I have the documentation right here to back up the charges, Mr. McDonough. So you have, so you have. And what do you propose to do now? I'm withdrawing from the race tomorrow. And I'm giving full publicity to your record and my paper. Miss Susan, I think the Reform Party can be persuaded through my influence to allow you to withdraw without prejudice. Allow me! Oh, that's very kind of them. Fortunately, we have another candidate available. A man well known for his past service to the community and for his rock-bound incorruptibility. Me. And just how many votes do you think you'll get after I expose your record? Miss Susan, you are an unfortunate captive of your own high convictions. When you entered this race, your opponent canceled his advertising in your paper. Your sacrifice for the community good was widely applauded. If you withdraw now and turn against your own party, the citizens of this fair city can only conclude that a sordid deal was made between you and your opponent. But you so don't... as I th say, we will allow you to withdraw in my favor. When duty calls, honest John McDonough was never one to withhold himself. Perhaps a speech, election eve, in my favor might be a touching gesture. Never. Yes, I think it would almost be a necessity. Otherwise, an entirely unfortunate smear campaign against you would have to be set in progress, also against your paper. There would be nothing I would regret more deeply. Well, uh, I'll have to talk it over with Mr. Harvey. He's waiting outside. I regret also that you will have to keep this conversation between us a secret, as a security measure. Good night, Miss Susan. And thank you for coming. 
I'm sure you would have made a most excellent mayor. Extra, extra, Susan Armstrong withdraws from race. McDonough, new reform party choice. Extra, read all about it. On this election eve, the big topic of conversation is newspaper editor Susan Armstrong's sudden and unexplained withdrawal from the morality race. Much speculation exists as to whether Miss Armstrong will appear on the platform tonight to champion the cause of the new candidate, veteran politician Honest John McDonough. Extra, extra, Susan Armstrong to support McDonough speaks tonight at election rally. Read all about it. Is my dress all right, Patience? Not too extreme for a public gathering. There's nothing wrong with the dress, Miss Armstrong. But you're not so sure about me. You're not really going to make a speech tonight in favor of McDonough, are you? The Reform Party can't count on your vote, Patience? The Reform Party. The Reform School Party. Miss Armstrong, it's entirely against my principles, but this time I'm siding with George. And you don't trust me to do what's best for the town or the newspaper? Of course I do. I just wish you'd do something else, that's all. You mean you're not coming to the rally? No. Oh, fool that I am, I'll most likely be there. (laughs) Thank you, Patience. Don't thank me. Just don't make me wish I hadn't come. Harvey? Yeah, I wish it wasn't so big. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Harvey. I'm sure whatever Miss Armstrong does will be for the best. Thank you, boy philosopher. And now, citizens of our fair city of Hillsdale, crown jewel in the diadem of Marmoset County, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the little lady who stepped aside in order to make way for a more experienced hand on the tiller. <laughs> As the new candidate of the Reform Party, I commend to your attention our former standard bearer, Miss Susan Armstrong. Gee, she's really going to talk, Mr. Harvey. No, I'm afraid she is, Sammy. My friends of Hillsdale, there has been considerable speculation as to why I removed myself as a candidate for mayor and as to whether I would tonight endorse the candidacy of honest John McDonough. To answer your doubts, I do endorse Mr. McDonough. Let's go home, Sammy. I'm with you, Mr. Harvey. My reasons why Mr. McDonough would make a much better mayor than I could hope to be are many. I shall name a few. As befits the public official, Honest John is thrifty. Out of his alderman's salary of $2,000 a year, I happen to know that he has in the past five years saved over $200,000. Hey, stop that, Dave. Let her talk. Mr. McDonough is loyal. Twenty-three members of his immediate family are on the city payroll... 14 of whom have been dead from 6 to 20 years. Hey, Mike, Frankie, get the dame away from the microphone. She's killing us. Let me at her. Stay right here, friend. Oh. I want you to hear the rest of this. Give it to him, Susan. You tell him, Susan. To continue, Mr. McDonough is the greatest vote getter in the history of this or any other city. In the last election held in his district, Out of a total of 3,000 registered voters, McDonough polled over 4,000 votes. And so I ask you, I ask you with these facts in mind when you go to the polls tomorrow, who is your choice for mayor, McDonough or Hendricks? Hey, hey, let me through here. Pardon me. Susan. Susan. George. George, was I all right, George? All right, you were wonderful. You were terrific. McDonough hasn't got a chance. You think it was a surprise? Surprise? Was it? Well, nobody in the whole city expected anything like... Well, uh, nobody but me, of course. I knew it all the time. <laughs> hey, come on, let's get out of here. Oh, 
Our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back in a moment. George. Yes, Susan? Final election results in? I'm just finishing my story. Hendricks in a landslide. Well. Well, he's stuffy, but I'm sure he's honest. An ideal mayor. You don't think I would have made a good mayor? No, of course, Susan. It's just that, well... It's just what? Well, that every time a new beauty queen is crowned, the mayor is supposed to have his picture taken kissing her. You'd have to admit you look pretty silly. Yes, that's true. But, George... Hmm? Just imagine the Navy coming to town. You know, I'm glad you didn't win. Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Von Zell inviting you to join us then. <laughs> 